Hello everyone! In this video we are going to have a lot of different stories and a lot of different news stories. Keep a critical mind as always. I will always try to put all the evidence and proof out there. If there isn't enough then also you can search for yourself but I will try to keep all those things out there for you guys and as always keep a critical mind and I hope you enjoy. If you guys remember I did a video recently where uh, part of it I spoke about the Sage and Slam the fact that Vivi is now in the same uh, area as her Oshi, or who, the person who used to be her Oshi is uh, Selene, you know, now still her Oshi, I'm pretty sure, as Doki Bird, but Selene was one of the reasons why she joined Nidhi Sanji. I was very happy during that time. <clears throat> I was like, hopefully, they can have some kind of interaction. Now, Doki had to address the drama. Basically, Doki x Vivi is not going to be a thing. Why? Nidhi Sanji. Nidhi Sanji has prevented them from even having any kind of conversation with each other, and let's hear it directly from Doki Bird, and in those words, uh, not in my paraphrasing. Could it be? Is she in the Say Jam Slam again? Yes, that is right. I will be participating in Say Jam Slam 3 for the Street Fighter 6 arc. We're back in our FGC arc, guys. <laughs> you guys know we're so fucked. Like, <laughs> this one, I'm really scared. I have no idea who a lot of these people are. So I'm like so anxious and everything. I will socialize. All right, now for the part where a lot of you Which is a good thing for her socializing are here for because of my pin message i will address the elephant in the room i also type this out because i don't want to accidentally go off script and like get people in trouble <laughs> i've asked the organizers and say jam if i could talk about it and they have like no problems with it i want to talk about it to make sure there's no like rumors or like speculations going on during the tournament especially before like the team announcement so you might have seen like the people who are participating in yeah. this current say jam slam exactly Apparently, the conditions that they gave the organizers was that there has to be zero interactions between me and them that means we won't be on the same team and they will not be in my skill division now to clarify this which i've seen uh this could easily be confused as vivi saying that they don't want to uh interact with doki i highly doubt that i think it's nidhi sanji they've done this before where they put rules for okay you want to be a part of this you can't interact with this person and you have to make sure that the uh, the organizers know you can't interact with this person because they left our they left our company on bad terms etc etc and the person that they're talking about of course is doki bird and selene Obviously, I'm going to be in the beginner level, and also I'm going to get like absolutely destroyed. But <laughs> they yeah. will not be in that skill division, so we will not fight 1v1. And Sage Jam even asked me if I was okay and comfortable with it a few days ago. And if I was really uncomfortable and stressed out about the whole situation, they won't let them participate. I was honestly like really surprised that he even gave me that option, since this was like the first time anyone has ever like asked this of me. And like he didn't have to do that. And I won't lie, I was really anxious, but I said it is not fair to kick the player out when they were not involved or responsible, especially when I know they're very passionate about fighting games and the FGC community. They really want to be here and I will not take that away from them. And we all know that I suck at fighting games and me getting kicked out won't really matter that much in the long run. So <laughs> I was honestly really surprised that Sage Jam wanted to make sure I was okay when it was really just easier to ask me to step down instead. I've been outcast before. I've been ostracized in the past. I was even denied entry for tournaments and events in the last six months. So like I know how it feels to be like excluded and I don't want that for others, especially if the event is something they're passionate about. So I told Sage Jam that we shouldn't take away their chance to participate and ruin their experience due to the actions of others. Going in, there's going to be like a lot of reactions when the announcements came out. So I just had to basically mentally prepare myself in advance type deal, which is fine. Like I knew in advance and I just had to like mentally prepare myself, make sure my mods understand what's going on as well. I'm making sure that no one's going to get in trouble and that starting here, there will be zero interactions with them as per the rules and we're just going to vibe and have fun. Okay, <laughs> it is a four fun tournament and I'm here to have fun. This will be the last time I'm going to talk about it going forward. So yeah. So yeah, she even made sure to let everyone know this is not their fault. This is not the fault of the person that we all know is Vivian Victoria. It is not the fault of them. Uh, maybe Seijan thought, oh man, this person's being mean to Doki. Maybe we should kick them out. But in fact, Doki understood this is not them, especially when Vivi really adores <clears throat> Doki in the sense of the person who is behind the, the character. Uh, the person who was Selen, she adores him. It's one of the reasons why she joined Nizi Sanji. She joined because her Oshi was, one of her Oshis was Selen. And this is really, again, showing how bad management is from Nizi Sanji, how horrible they are. They are mi mistreating their livers in the sense that they don't even let them, you know, talk to their Oshis because they have a problem with it, because the management has a problem with the person who was their Oshi. This is evil against Vivi because Vivi was probably extremely happy to be in the same place as Doki and to be told you can't interact with them or, you know, maybe there's going to be consequences if you do type of thing is really just 
evil, not even human in any way, shape, or form. It is just like an evil creature, you know? And it says, uh, people are, of course, quite wondering what the heck is going on. Uh, it's not taboo, usually, in Japanese corpos to do this. It's just Nidhi Sanji. It's solely because EN management hates Doki and has hated her for over a year and a half. My take, just to avoid unnecessary drama overall, here's the reason. Let's say ex corpo talent interacts and stream with their talent. Normal people on the internet will say, this is nice, so wholesome, those contact, etc. Not normal people on the internet, the, the crazies will say, Ew, look at the ex-talent, they can't move on, despite being graduated, still interacting with the talents. Uh, he, she probably leeching off of his or old agency. Now you know the thing that's gonna blow up, uh, probably second reaction, because people on the internet love drama. Very true. Really can't say much about Hollow for the moment, like, I, as far as I know, that's not an issue. Uh, two other times have, uh, kinda gave their own reasons why they can't interact. For Coco, it's her own decision to avoid West Taiwan drama reemergences. For Sana, she's not reincarnated as far as I know. But Cover pretty much allowed their talent interact with the PLs as long as I think they don't interact with them using their current uh, uh, livers. Because as far as I know, there hasn't been like, for example, uh, you know, Mel or something, the ex Mel going and interacting directly with, you know, her, her gen mates or something like that. I think in their case, it's probably not a directive from management, but more just a respect on the part of the people who left to not bring any new drama, any other drama, any of that kind of stuff. Kind of like just an unspoken rule in general, but it is messed up that that rule was put by Nidhi Sandy. That's the big issue that I have here. That's what I keep harping on. That's what I'm angry about. Uh, Vivi was made to pull out at the last Sagem event. Vivi getting the big L of not only having her Oshi graduate so shortly after her debut, but also being banned from ever interacting or collabing with them ever again. She was pulled out because the reason wasn't said. Now we have more than just speculation. She was probably pulled out because, of course, uh, Doki was there. And she probably fought tooth and nails. Like, I want to be in this. I have to be in this. This is what I do. I like fighting game tournaments. I like the fighting game community. I want to do this. And, they, you know, probably since... Uh, Niji EN management doesn't care that much, but it's like, all right, do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, they still restricted somebody from having fun with their Oshi. And that is evil. There's no other way to explain it. It's evil. It is dirty. It is just, ah, uh, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It's one of the few times I will not be uh, objective about this. This is, uh, even objectively, this is horrible. You don't do this. This destroys your PR. Just even thinking on the PR perspective of it, it destroys your PR. You just destroyed it now. Anything positive that could have come out of that for Niji Sanji, uh, the Sagem Slam, it's gone. The only positives is going to be for, for Vivi, which, you know, she deserves positives. And that's what I'm going for. The positives for Vivi and Doki. As I have covered in the past, I did not expect this. This is a bit of big news here. We had been talking about, I had been talking about, uh, how Fifi recently had an issue where she had to get lawyers involved with YouTube in order to get some answers on to why everything was going wrong there. Uh, she was getting demonetized and things were getting removed and things like that. Uh, and she was getting, I think, uh, community guideline strikes and those types of things. So she had to send lawyers in order to ask questions because YouTube doesn't answer you if you're a small creator. Even if you're a large creator, they don't answer you. They told her, you have to be monetized in order for us to give you a human review, which is evil. Now, you have Twitch banning uh, Fifi again. She answers here. Her immediate response was, are you effing kidding me? Then after that, she says, okay, Twitch and DJ Clancy, which is, I think the uh, Clancy is the person who is in charge of Twitch right now, the Twitch CEO. We need to talk about this. This is my seventh ban. Last time you indefinitely banned me. I messaged you. My talent management messaged you. My lawyers have messaged you asking why I keep getting banned. Your response is, sorry, we can't tell you. What the F? I requested a Twitch partner manager. You told me, sorry, your channel isn't popular enough to be our priority. What the F do you do? Do you have against me? It seems like it is a personal thing at this point. It really, there is no other way to think about it at this point. It just really seems like a personal vendetta. I don't know what the heck is going on. Uh, basically, I, it says, I love streaming on Twitch. I do my best to follow the, the Twitch streamer rules and many... The many streamers actually don't follow them. You constantly be attacking me. Why are why is this happening? Basically, I think I fix this soon. I guess burping contests are a bannable offense. Why you keep coming back this platform when they treat you like this? I mean, it sucks because I genuinely love Twitch. It sucks that they hate me so much. Why do they keep coming back to the platform? Let me answer this for her, not actually speaking for her, but as a creator on Twitch. Why do people keep coming back? Why do I stay in there? Why do other people stay in there? Why do big people stay in there knowing that it's such a bad place? Um, at least it doesn't have really consistent ways they, they follow rules. 
it's the only big streaming platform, streaming only platform that exists. If you are a streaming only person, it is the biggest and the one that has the most reach. It's the one where you can reach the most audience, the one where you can reach the most people, the one where you can get the most uh, bang for your buck when it comes to your time. That is something that, you know, Kick doesn't have or Blue Sky or any of those other places don't have. That's why people still stay on YouTube. Uh, even after it being uh, a cesspool as well, when it comes to the rules and all this other stuff, just really messing around with ASMR people, messing around with VTubers overall, uh, Twitch doing the same thing with VTubers and ASMR and all that, and now with karaoke and other things like that. It's just, where else do we go? If we go in a smaller space, we don't have any reach. Even me, who has tiny, tiny reach, would have zero reach anywhere else other than the big the, the big three, which is, you know, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, that's the main thing. It says, that's what I hate the most about Twitch. They don't tell you why you got banned. How should you improve? Legit, there's no reasons why I got banned. One, watch the new video chat sent. Two, underboob. Three, watch MTV's ridiculousness. Four, told the uh, chat the color of my underwear, 2024. Five, unknown. Six, unknown. Seven, unknown. So after a while, they just stopped They stopped responding. They started getting lazy. They stopped uh, even giving them the reasons why they got banned. And... I do. I mean, Morik Pai, even Morik Pai, who is, uh, skirts the rules a lot. And she is an IRL, like flesh streamer. She is a booba streamer. She is a hot tub streamer. She is, you know, that kind of streamer. She, she does show quite a bit. Even her, she's like, she doesn't, she doesn't see why this happened. Like, and the thing is, here's the issue that a lot of YouTubers have. Morik Pai, more power to them doing the content that they want to do. Great. But if Twitch is allowing Morik Pai and that type of content to go out, which is perfectly fine there's a space for it as long as you know 13 year olds aren't watching it um why not let a vtuber like fifi have even she's even more covered she does even less uh risque type of content and now she gets banned that is the big hypocrisy that twitch has out there and i'm not saying this to be against morik pie or any any of the other irl booby streamers or the irl hot tub streamers and that is their niche that is their, a niche that they want to be a part of I have nothing, no ethical, moral, or anything against that. It's just Twitch's response to on each side. If a VTuber ever tries to do that, they get in, they immediately banned. Even if they do the exact same thing as a flesh streamer, exact same dress as a flesh streamer, they will get banned. And that is what the VTuber community doesn't like about Twitch. Hollow Live Production English is doing Enigmatic Recollection, which is going to be all of Hollow EN. The new project starring Hollow Live English, original illustrations from the launch trailer, are here. The members of Hollow Promise comfortably take a quick break in the shade of a tree. Love Promise is where it's, where's the tree, and um, the tree is going to be a part of this. This is just, you know, their uh, original illustrations here. And for those who do not know what Hollow uh, what this hollow live enigmatic recollection is going to be we have it here I'm going to show you the trailer of course because of the fact I cannot be sure if anything is copywritten as it is hollow live they do have sometimes uh, large people you know bigger people do their stuff and they end up uh, copywriting it usually they're not having an issue but in order to prevent any uh, degradation of quality if I have to remove things with AI etc I don't want to have to do that so this, I'm doing it silently but let's take a look at what's going on or at least having it in a low term we're having all of them there it's just it's everyone even Bibu we have Raora the new ones they even were able to put justice in here that's how dedicated ne uh, Hollow Live is compared to Nidhi Sanji. Nidhi Sanji is not as dedicated. Look at that. They're making a whole freaking RPG style thing going on. It looks like it's going to be a freaking game, honestly. And it's freaking, it's an RPG style thing. And they have their own designs, their own capes, their own magic stuff. They're going to have magic. Lots of fights, lots of battles. Oh, wow. Shark Temple too. Fuo and Mokoko be scared. Ah, uh, GG just being a gremlin. Everyone, everyone's having fun. And like, what I find insane is that they even decided to put Justice in there. Comparatively. It is insane that even Justice is going to be in this whole thing. Because it's, they're new. Usually agencies don't do this. But it looks like they've been planning this for a while now. There they are, in the shade of a tree. How Live EN going to do that? Enigmatic Recollection. That's their new, their whole new thing. That's the big thing that's going to happen. And it is going to be 
fun, whether it be a game, whether it be an anime, whatever it ends up being. It looks like it might be a game. If it's an RPG style anime, that's going to be crazy. Uh, but if it's going to be a game, it's going to be it's going to be very, very popular. So that is going to be very good for Hololive overall. And I'm very happy that they're doing something like this. Great news, everyone. Uh, Michi Mochi V, who was hospitalized recently for uh, you know, personal reasons. She doesn't mention very much. She just mentioned she was in the hospital bed while the whole thing was going on in Indonesia, the whole political stuff that I won't get into. Uh, while that was going on, she was in a hospital bed. Uh, she says she will be out soon. Then I shall be recovering at home with my family and back to streaming. A lot of updates. One of them now is now I need some joint and back support. Oh, so the if you remember, she has an autoimmune thing where um, her immune system is attacking healthy cells. Her own cells, not bacteria, not viruses, not anything, her own cells. And now, from what we know, just from this, she said that her mother and uh, her father, I think her father or uncle or something like that, has uh, ha it attacked the hair. Her mother, it attacked her joints. And now we know, at least through the clues that she's left behind, that it is also attacking her joints. That she is also the victim of it attacking joints instead of, you know, uh, something else inside still. So now she's going to need a uh, good back support, joint support recommended for good joint braces, support products. Let me know. So it's going to be weakening her joints and possibly causing uh, problems in the future. There are medicines that she can take. There are immunosuppressants. Basically, they make your immune system not as active. They suppress the activity of the immune system so it won't attack so aggressively the body. It has side effects of, of course, making you more susceptible to certain things like infections, etc illnesses like flu etc uh, but it has the positive side effect of making sure your joints don't get damaged making sure your back doesn't get damaged none of that kind of stuff if it is what i'm thinking of course this is just speculation on my part just gonna let you know it's, i don't know anything about michi mochi v personally i don't know any more information than what is being shown here but just based on what she said before about the joint issues happening in her family with the autoimmune disease it might be that it's attacking her joints says, i feel so old please end me bro of course, they're making fun. Uh, welcome to feeling old world, but on serious note, invest in good ergonomic chair and mattress. The ergonomic chairs help a lot. They really do. You spend most of the time on those in your daily life. It's worth spending some juicier money. Uh, ask Michael or any of us. We want your back kicking. No doo-doo bone. Like others have said, if you have a, a physiotherapist, ask them for their recommendations, but also do invest in ergonomic office chairs. Gaming chairs are terrible. Yeah, I don't use a gaming chair. I use an ergonomic office chair uh, for sitting for a while. And ergonomic office chairs offer lumbar support and support your neck as well. I don't have the neck support, but I have the lumbar support, and that helps a ton. Uh, it helps with my um, my posture, and it helps prevent lower back issues, which I have because I have slip discs and herniated discs and all that wonderful stuff that happens with life. A bit of Hololive news. Ado, or Ado, I forget exactly how it's, it's pronounced, tells Chloe why she chose her to be in a song group project. Because if you remember correctly, uh, the other day I did have a announcement that um, Tsukinomito, you had Tsukinomito and others, including Marine and Chloe and others out there like Salomon, etc., are going to be part of an Ado created collab song. Uh, and she says, uh, thank you very much, Sakamata Chloe. When I first listened to PET, or pet. I remember uh, being surprised at how different voices you could use, how many different voices you could use. So I was hoping that you could use your voice to sing in the song this time. I'm very happy that my wish came true, which means that right now they're probably at the the uh, mixing stage. So they probably have all the voice uh, parts, the parts that each one is doing for their singing. I think Chloe actually had the lowest and highest note of, of the cover song. Her vocal range is crazy, so I totally get Ado or Ado. Yeah, she has some similarities with Otto style singing songs, and I hope that other members have a chance to collab with Otto too. Like Ayunda Risu, maybe. PET is really underrated. Otto Basado, <laughs> based Otto, I guess. Uh, Facts, PET is one of the best Hollow original songs. Most people haven't heard. I haven't heard of it. So, yeah. Still one of my favorite Hollow songs. She's one of my favorite Hollow singers ever. Her covers are really underrated too. Perfect Crime, Poison Apple. She hits all the perfect spots in my ears, and her songs are always full of emotions. She writes the lyrics most of the original songs too. It's a perfect fan circle. Hololive loves Otto. Otto loves Hololive. Chloe, the new Oshi Mark just dropped the, the shower one. Original tweet here, just in case if you wanted to see it. Makes sense. This Chloe's an orca. They have really high vocal range. I mean, who, who knows? Maybe that's why they did it. Um, Ada was completely on point when wanting Chloe for that vocal range. Into the Chloe's gra gravely voice ran a chill down my back. Then she goes on a hit. The high notes. Chloe is unreal. 
Marine just amazing as always. Her unique voice is so lovely to listen to. And of course, we have the song itself. But first, let's look at the Edo thing. And we have Chloe responding to Edo saying here, if, if, if it freaking loads. Uh, Thank you, Edo, for reaching out to me. It was such an honor for me to fan too. So it was my PET that triggered it. I'm glad it, I worked hard. I will take this experience as encouragement and continue to work hard on my own style of the expression and music. Thank you so much for this valuable opportunity. And these are wonderful opportunities. Yes, even if they are a part of a large organization, it is not a guarantee that you're going to have opportunities like this. You still have to work your butt off as Chloe and everyone from any dark organization, medium and small organizations, work their butt off to get through and get opportunities like this. Indies do as well, but a lot of times indies don't have a marketing department, don't have people marketing them. They're their own market marketing personnel. So it's, it can be harder for indies to do this. And of course, I can't actually show you the actual, like, I can show you what's going on here and some of the things they have, some of the animations of it. Uh, I can't actually show you the song because copyright and, you know, all that kind of fun stuff, my video would be taken down because of it. Here's all the people who are a part of it. And yeah, they all did an amazing job. I've listened to it before. They did an amazing job. It is a good song. You should listen to it as well. Uh, even if you don't understand the lyrics, um, take a look, take a listen. And you're going to see an amazing job by each and every one of them. Welcome back, everybody, to our VTuber Showcase, the place where I always want to give back to the wonderful community who has given so much to me. And boy, has the community given a lot to me, and I'm always appreciative. And that's why I try to share the love and spread it around as much as I can. Today, we're talking about Lara, Lara Silverfox. I hope it's Lara. It might be Lara, but I think it's usually Lara. Uh, we're having a Runaway Supernatural Miko Fox VTuber. Uh, it's a she, her pre debut to be announced soon, but they still do some streams on occasion. Hello, darlings would be dear. If you help, please uh, release my tales. They're doing a, a tale reveal actually have 11 expressions, but there are a few to share with you guys. You like it. Basically all the expressions that they have there. They have been doing some streams here and there, even though they're technically pre debut. They have been doing some streams. What is the pre debut is I think their newest model, the one with the with the tails and everything like that. So let's take a look at their about section, choose your poison, 18 plus content, topics expected. Due to my no filter comments and my professional yapping, I'll have to know, I'll have you know, this is 18 plus content mostly. They say I'm rude, uh, but I'm really just lazy and rather tell people the truth. Deal with it. And it says, Lara, runaway nine-tailed supernatural Miko Fox. I was known to be the strongest in terms of psychic and supernatural abilities. Treated in the highest respect and protection of others. However, I have chosen to run away and to learn to do things by myself as I strive to be an idol. I must, it may sound cliche, but instead of the gods giving my own fate, I'd rather forge my own as I learn everything from scratch, not because what was given to me, but with my own hard work. And that is absolutely a wonderful thing to have out there, a wonderful idea to have, a wonderful position to have amongst everything. So let's take a look at something that was set that was put on recently by her hi master how are you that's in vr chat by the way <laughs> it's like my favorite line <laughs> i do that a lot on tiktok way before <laughs> she's having fun which is good and that's how i got shadow banned end of story oh really okay <laughs> uh -huh, you're doing good Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh girl. <laughs> A school girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How dare you call me a yandere? <laughs> it's yandere because of the of the school uniform. But yeah, uh let's take a look at her YouTube here. She has changed outfit tutorial on VTube Studio. She's done some tutorials in the past, which is awesome. Some uh VR chat and chill, some uh shorts on her YouTube side. She is growing slowly, but she's growing. And I want to help that her out with that. So I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you being a part of the VTuber showcase. I really honestly do hope that this helps you in your growth and it helps you in your VTuber future. Thank you so much for watching. That is all the news that we have for today. Please let me know down below if you want to know any more news or if you have any comments regarding anything that you saw here, which I will try my best to respond to. I love seeing your comments down below. Of course, as well, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that will give you more uh, information every single day. I do two videos a day, so hopefully you enjoy.